So we just looked how to convert coordinates. Now we're gonna actually look at the different forms here. So I mentioned cis form, cosine i sine. Let's fill in a little more details. There's gonna be a theta. You're gonna add these two together. This i is a placeholder. So you don't really do much with the i, it just separates the real part from the imaginary part. And of course, there's another angle right here. Then there's also a distance or radius, and that is multiplied on the outside. So this is cosine i sine form. And you can either write an a plus i b form or in this form on the right side. And this form on the right side, you can distribute the r into here if you want to or leave it outside. So let's talk about Euler form now. Now, one important thing to keep in mind that cosine i sine and Euler form are both polar forms. What that means is they both use an r and a theta, not an x and a y. So they are given in polar coordinates. That's what polar forms mean. Euler form is a lot more simple. r, you still multiply by r at the front, and then you have e, to the i theta. And this e to the i theta, don't think too much about it. It's basically a placeholder. What in the heck is e to the i theta? Don't worry about that too much. Just be more concerned about here's the radius multiplied out front, and then here's the angle theta right here. This will make a lot of computations much, much easier. It's also a lot less writing than writing all this cis stuff out right here. There is another way to write the cis form. This big function right here, you can write it as r times cis theta, which stands for cosine i sine, which is written right above. So that's another way to write the cis form. Your book uses the cis form, but I strongly recommend you go with Euler form, much less writing. All right, so now that you know the forms, that lets us uh, multiply and take powers very easily. So that's what Euler form and cis form are good for. So you can multiply and you can do any powers, including fractional powers. So that's what Euler form is good for. You can multiply over in Cartesian form, but you have to remember I squared is negative one, you need a FOIL and it's a few more steps. Cartesian form, what is it good for? It's good for addition or subtraction. So that's what Cartesian form is very good for, but if you're gonna multiply or take to any powers, I recommend go to Euler form. And the next thing we're gonna do is look at a square root here.